Recently I was battling away trying to scatter some leaves through a scene and I was really having problems trying to make it look natural. So I started playing around with emitters and just actually hosing the scene down with leaves and I got some pretty nice results and so that led me on to using it in a few different scenes and I, I think this is a really nice way to get scattered natural assets around a scene. I'm sure if you are an absolute legend with matrix scatters and all those sort of various tools that you probably can get the same effect but I like this technique because I can just scatter more and more layers of different assets and, and debris on top of each other and it starts looking really Really cool. So I've split this tutorial up into two parts. The first one will cover the canyon scene and just scattering a couple of different size rocks and then in part two of the tutorial we'll cover the forest scene with the leaves and the twigs and we'll also talk about how to scatter assets onto displaced geometry. Righto, let's crack into it. Let's just jump into the camera that I have created here. Okay, so it's not bad, but what I think would be better is if we could have some um, more rocks, basically. So let's, so like, as if there's been rock falls and whatnot. So we want some sort of big rocks in the background and maybe some sort of medium-sized rocks in the foreground here. So you could plow away with various matrix scatters and, and, and manually placing rocks. But what I thought I would do is I'd use some particle emitters just to basically throw some stuff around the scene. So we're going to start with the large rocks. Let's just jump out of the camera and see what we've got here. So here the different assets that we have. I've got large ones, medium sized ones and small ones. So I want to scatter some rocks along both these edges here. I've already set up some particle emitters, these two here, and you create those just by coming up to simulate particle emitter. And basically what we want to do is let's just take a copy of these rocks and drop them underneath both of these particle emitters. Holding down control, drop them under there, grab them again, hold down control and drop them under that one as well. The next thing you want to do is right click on the emitter, come down to simulation tag and hit rigid body. Do the same for the second one couple of things you want to check so on both of these emitters just select both of them because the settings are going to be the same come to the particle tab and make sure that show objects is selected this tutorial is not specifically about particle emitters so you can take a look here but I'm not going to go through all of the specific settings click on the dynamics tab here and come to the collision tab and make sure that under inherit it's apply tag to children now before we set these off we just want to make sure we've got some geometry for it to collide with right click on all of the cliffs and choose simulation collider body let's choose the cat monument let's add a tag to that as well collider let's choose the ground let's add that to there as well now one more thing I've got is underneath the set I've got this huge plane massive 10,000 by 10,000 and I'm calling it the catcher now the reason I've got this is because if any of the particles escape off the set they're gonna fall infinitely so I did think I'd be able to use the destructive force but it doesn't seem to work with particles if anyone knows why that doesn't seem to work with uh, geometry particles I'd love to know so what I do is I create this massive plane and I add a collider body to that as well so anything that falls off the set gets caught by that massive catcher plane and then later on when I turn all these scattered particles into individual geometry I can just delete anything that's made it off the set okay cool so that's looking good so let's just make sure your timeline's on zero set it to as many frames as you want and hit play okay one thing that does help select both of the dynamics tabs come down to collision where it says bounce we don't really need the bounce so just hit zero there and you can increase the friction back it up to frame one let's try that again so you can see that some are going crazy and all over the place that's cool we'll delete those later we can see that that's going to give us the effect that we want so just bear with me but the next thing we want to do is we want to bake this simulation so just back it up to one click on both the dynamics tabs here come across to cache and click bake object Okay, cool. So those are baked now. If your computer's fast enough, you'll be able to just click down in the timeline. But my computer struggles a little bit like that. So what I need to do is start on zero and I actually just need to drag it forward. And I, you want to get it down the timeline until it, all the rocks kind of stop moving. Somewhere like that. And then let go. Okay, great. Let's have a look at what that's created. So just click on our camera that we set up. Okay, great. So ignoring this big guy here because we'll get rid of him. You can see what that's done down the back. So that's cool. Great. So the next thing we do want to do is we want to be able to clean a few of them up. And the way we do that is we're going to select both of those emitters, right click current state to object. And what you'll see that's done is that has created a null and underneath that null you have all of the objects that the emitter scattered. Okay, so that's quite cool. So now, so what we'll do now is we'll just turn off these emitters. We'll hide them. We'll put them in a group of their own to keep them out of the way. Or this big rock emitter. And now the great thing is, is that we can, if we sit take the selection tool we can delete certain rocks so we can take a quick look around our scene and you can see that it's just piled up rocks where we wanted them in a kind of nice natural way i don't like these ones leaning against the cats so i'm going to delete them let's jump into our camera and have a look Great, so come up to our nulls for our big rocks. We can delete these dynamics tabs. Okay, so I've already got some emitters set up for some mid-sized rocks. So I've got one that's going to basically drop some rocks in the foreground of the camera, and then I've got one that's gonna drop rocks around the feet of the cats. So let's come down to our mid-sized rocks, selecting them all, holding down control, drop them under the two emitters. 
Let's add the Dynamics tab, so right click, Simulation, Rigid Body. Let's double check that under the Collision tab we can disable the bounce, let's increase the friction and make sure that the Inherit tag is applied to children. Let's double check that we have Show Objects selected, we do. Let's back the timeline back up to the first frame and let's hit Play. Pause it there and again that's looking like it's going to give us the effect we want. Back the playhead up to 1 and let's select both our Dynamics tabs here, come across to Cache and choose Bake Object. Great, so drag the playhead along, let's jump into our camera, awesome, so starting to look really good. Great, so let's do the same thing here, let's select both of those mid-sized rocks, right click current state to object, and that'll process those through. Let's scatter some small rocks over these mid-sized rocks just to blend the rocks into the terrain a little better. Enable these emitters, and these ones are set up in roughly the same positions as the, as the mid-size. Let's get our small rocks, holding control, and let's drop them onto both those emitters. Let's select both our emitters and we will right click simulation rigid body. Now because we do want these mid-sized rocks to act as colliders, we're going to need to add collider tags to them. So just select the groups for the mid-sized rocks, right click simulation collider body and just make sure on that collision tab that the inherit tag is applied to children. Let's just check the settings here, let's remove that bounce, increase the friction. Here we go, let's just give this a quick playthrough, see what it's going to do. I actually think those look a little bit too big. So let's just quickly twirl these down, select these assets, let's just come to coordinates, and let's just go half that size, so 0.5. Try that, play, yeah that's better. And you know what, I don't think we're going to be able to see the small rocks down by the statue, so let's delete that small rock emitter down by the statue, and let's bake out the foreground one. So click on the Dynamics tab and click Bake Object. Okay, awesome, let's drag the playhead along. Okay, so interesting, this actually highlights um, one of the main issues with scattering onto a displaced surface. So as you can see, the smaller rocks, you can see some of them, but most of them have actually fallen below the displacement of this texture, the sand texture. Now I've set up the other scene specifically to help you deal with that situation and we'll cover that second scene in part two of this series. I would love to hear from anyone who has experience with scattering onto displaced surfaces. Okay for the purposes of this video I'm just going to raise up these smaller rocks so that we can see them above the displacement and in part two of the series I'll cover how I scatter onto displaced geometry. Okay so let's just right click current state to object, let's disable the emitter and let's just grab the null that all your small rocks are under and just raise them slightly. Okay, cool. So now you can see those smaller rocks because we've just raised them up slightly above the displaced geometry. So you get the idea. I think that's about as far as we need to go in this scene. In part two of this series, we'll look at a very basic forest scene. Uh, we'll scatter some twigs and some leaves and we'll predominantly look at how to scatter onto displaced geometry. Thanks for watching. I used to do lots of things.